Welcome to part two of Building Tops by Robot Dog, which stands for Traverser of Planar Surfaces and is also Spot spelled backwards. In part one, I designed and built a single test leg and worked out inverse kinematic equations to position the foot. Today, I'm going to redesign the leg, switch from UART to Canva serial communication, and hopefully make the leg jump. My goals for the redesign are to get rid of using limit switches for homing, reduce how much the leg sticks out, and reduce the weight as much as possible. The overall goal here is to reduce the complexity of the leg while still making it look nice. And after spending some time designing, I came up with this. And to see just how much of an aesthetic difference the redesign makes, take a look at four legs of the original design versus four legs of the redesign. So now it's time to take apart the old leg and build a new one. Seventy five years later. The new design weighs just under 3 kilograms, which is about 0.4 kilograms lighter than the previous design. Now on to motor control. In part 1, I mentioned that I planned on switching from UART to CAN bus because the microcontroller that I'm using only has 8 out of the 12 serial ports that I would need to control 12 motors with UART on a full robot. CAN bus, on the other hand, connects all the motors to only 2 wires, CAN high and CAN low, which not only allows me to control 12 motors, but allows me to significantly reduce my wiring. The main limitation of using CAN bus is that the O-Drive motor controllers that I'm using don't yet have an official Arduino library for CAN bus, so I'm not able to read the absolute position from the onboard encoders. What this means is that homing the actuators requires me to move the leg manually to a common position, and I'm able to do this with the help of physical limits integrated into the design. Now, I fully acknowledge that this is not the best way to go about doing this. I could possibly add absolute encoders to the output shaft or use potentiometers. The reason I don't consider those options is because they would increase cost and make the design a lot bulkier, which is what I'm trying to avoid. Now, on to gate testing. Previously, I created a stepping sequence called sine step, and the trajectory is just the path of a sine wave followed by a straight line. This time, I've modified the path to be a sine wave followed by another sine wave with a much smaller amplitude. I got the idea for this gate trajectory from the Stanford Doggo, and I'm hoping that this further smooths out the gate. I've also added parameters to the step sequence so that we can get normal walking steps, large choppy steps, fast running steps, side steps, and back steps. Okay, so now it's time for the fun stuff. Jumping. This is easily my most anticipated future to see on the final bot, and it was surprisingly easy to program. I'll start off by making a new test setup with these makeshift linear rails. I first programmed a simple up and down sequence, but it didn't come back up. This happened because one of the belts on the knee actuator wasn't tensioned enough. The knee actuator actually carries the most load, so its belts have to be really, and I mean really, tensioned. Luckily, this was an easy fix. I just added a second idler pulley to the design and reprinted some of the parts. And now, it's able to go up and down. If we increase the speed of the sequence, then we start to get a bounce. And increasing it further, we get our jump. We can make small frequent jumps, or a single large jump. It could jump fairly high, but because the tape measure moved, I don't have an exact measure. Now, the final thing that I want to test is how much weight the leg can hold. 
We'll start by trying 5 pounds. Next, 10 pounds. I also did some rudimentary tests on a scale and it looks like the max weight that we can hold is about 13 pounds. And with that, I'll conclude this video. I'm really happy with the redesign, so in my next video, you can expect a fully built robot. And if you don't want to miss that, be sure to subscribe to the channel. You can also check out my website and Hackaday page in the description for CAD and code files as well as details about the project. Thanks for watching and see you next time.